when I leave the church, I'm going to go out in the community and I'm just going to love on people as I had just been loved on. You have a finite amount of time and you got a finite amount of money. Give what you can and just pray over it. And Jesus is there. If you, if you give to the kingdom, the kingdom will give back to you. When the Holy Spirit really pushed me to get baptized, it was just a confidence that I've never felt before. Not only just personally, but in being able to really lean on God. Every message that we were able to hear, it was almost like the person speaking was speaking directly to me kind of really developed that one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship with Jesus and turning the relationship into a one-way street into a two-way street. Sharing God's love is being a good example. Once we walk out of that door, we are supposed to apply what we know to others and to ourselves. If I'm going through something that I just need somebody to lean on and somebody who has loves Jesus, like that's the biggest thing is my community now loves Jesus. Hey everybody, my name's Beth, if I haven't had the chance to meet you, and I'm so excited to be in person today. So, hey, thanks. If you, if you haven't been a part of Prairie Heights, the reason people are clapping is because I've been away at home on quarantine due to COVID over the last two Sundays. Uh, our family's doing real well, and so uh, we're super thankful for that. I am super thankful to be out of the house. It's so funny, right? It's like we crave time with our family, but then when we're forced to have it, ooh, wow. So like, let me give you a window in. Uh, immediately when I found out we would be quarantined, I started ordering games on Amazon. And so we ordered some new games and we played some fun games together as a family. And uh, we built a bunch of Legos, spaceships and towers and all of that. We got really annoyed with each other multiple times, all four of us. And uh, then the holiday movies began to stream on the TV. And so we got pretty excited about that. And last year, uh, let my son Ian, who is now six, watch Home Alone, a classic from the 90s. And so when that began to scroll, he's like, Mom, can we watch Home Alone? Of course we can. So we watched Home Alone. And what it made me think of is it made me think of today. And there's a scene in the movie that made me think about the very thing that you and I are going to grapple with, that we're going to wrestle with, that I believe that God has for us today. And so to set the scene and give you some context, you're going to see a clip here in a moment of parents that are on a flight. They're on their way to Paris, France. They live in the U.S. And their family is going to meet extended family for their Christmas vacation. And so, yeah, get ready. It's a spoiler alert. I don't feel that bad, though, because you've had... 31 years to watch the movie. <laughs> so go ahead and take a look. What's the matter? Honey? I have a terrible feeling. About what? That we didn't do something. Ah, now you feel that way because we left in such a hurry. We took care of everything. Believe me, we did. Did I turn off the coffee? No. I did. Did you lock up? Yeah. Did you close the garage? That's it. I forgot to close the garage, that's it. No, that's not it. What else could we be forgetting? Can you imagine forgetting one of your kids? Oh, so the rest of the movie, called Home Alone, is about Kevin's mom, Kate, frantically, urgently doing everything that she can to get home to her son before Christmas Day. So we're going to come back to that. As Doug shared, Today we are in our very last week of our series, Simple Not Easy, and at Prairie Heights we have one simple mission, one simple mission to connect those apart from God with Christ and a church family, simple mission. That's it, real simple. And today what we're gonna talk about in our wrapping up of this series is our last 
value, our last way that we behave, and it's that we are going to reach one more, that we're going to behave in such a way on a regular basis, on a daily basis, individually, and together as a church family, that we are going to be so passionate and so committed to reach one more, and to actually see that the way that we live our life matches up with this value, this behavior. And so today as we wrestle with that and as we grapple with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk us through a couple stories and I'm going to talk about what does it look like for you and I to become people who reach one more? What does it look like to be people who reach one more? And I couldn't uh, think of a better way. You know, I could sit down at my desk and I could write down and I could come up with a lot of ways that we can do that together. Uh, what's awesome is that it's all right here. I don't, have to, I don't have to come up with it. It's all right here. Jesus gave us a really clear path to what it looks like for you and I to behave in such a way that we would be so committed to reach one more. And so we're gonna dig into the uh, book of Luke it was written by Luke, real simple. That was, are you with me? Book of Luke written by Luke, okay. Got it? Okay, great. Uh, woo, funny. Okay, so uh, there are four gospels. Basically, all that means is there are four books of the Bible in the New Testament that share the story of Jesus. Luke is one of those. He's one of the authors, and he was a physician, and so he does it in a way that's a little bit more analytical, and one of the things that I learned uh, actually this week, that's what's so fun is we can always learn more things about God's word and about God and about the Bible. And so if you think you've got it all, you don't. And if you think you don't know anything, you're in good company, okay? So uh, what's so exciting is that I'm always learning something brand new. God is revealing new things to my life through his word. And so in the book of Luke, because he was more analytical, everything that we read in Luke is in order. Like when we read the whole book, it's actually happened in order. That'll come to play in context as we dig through this. So what I want you to do, if you brought your Bible, grab your Bible. If you have your phone, you can download the YouVersion Bible app if you haven't already. It's YouVersion Bible app. If you've got your app, pull it up because I want you to underline you can underline if you've got a physical Bible. It's okay for you to circle stuff. It's okay for you to highlight stuff. I want you to underline words and phrases, parts of scripture that we're going to go through today that might connect with you. You can highlight that in the YouVersion Bible app as well. So let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 1. That's where we're going to start. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Ready? Are you ready? Oh, you are not ready. Are you ready? All right, we're going to get excited about God's word. 10.1, after this, it says the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. One of the things I love about that is he sent out and he sent two by two. So we'll come back to that in a second. The first two words, though, what are the first two words? What are the first two words? Let's go back and put that on the screen. What are the first two words? Say it together after this, after this. So when I read that, as I'm preparing for today, I thought to myself, after what? After what? So I went right before it, and because it's in order, this happened before this. So we're gonna go to Luke 9, we're gonna go to verse 57. So go back a little bit. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And the heading for that is the cost of following Jesus. The cost of following Jesus. Let's read about what the cost of following Jesus looks like. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Sounds like that man's excited to follow Jesus. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus said to another man, he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 61, it says, still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. 
And so as we read through that story, as I think about those two examples of two people who are saying, I will follow you wherever you go. I'm ready to follow you, Jesus. What did they then both say at different times? But God, first, I gotta go do something else. But God, first, there's something more important than following you. But God, first, I have to go make sure that everything is all tidy and put together and and everything's been complete before I follow you. So what I want you to grapple with right now is as you came today, as you logged in today, process in your life today, what is your, but God, first. But God, first, I have to. But God, first I have to. And for some of you, that's something that has been an excuse. And I don't know what that would be for you exactly. For some of you, it's simply a distraction. It's just something that's been a distraction in your life that has kept you from following Jesus on a daily basis. For others of you, it's like that last part. It's exactly like that last part where he says, still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. He said, go back. And what did did Jesus say? Jesus replied and said, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Who today has been looking back? Who today has been looking in the rearview mirror of your past and you've been stuck in your past? You've been stuck in the patterns of your past. And Jesus today wants to break you free from that. And he wants to tell you today that to follow me, you got to let go of your past. What Jesus tells us in those two very, I would say dramatic, right? Because we would all read that and we would say, how come Jesus wouldn't let him go bury his own father? Why wouldn't he let him go say goodbye to his family? All Jesus is saying is like, hey, We got to go. There's no more excuses. We got to go and we can't be looking back. I'm on a mission. Jesus knew why he was on a mission. And to give you context right here in in context, what Jesus was getting ready for, he's, he's doing the majority of his ministry in terms of healing people and miracles and inviting people to follow him. This is an example of him inviting people to follow him. And you know where they were headed? They were getting ready to go to Jerusalem. Do you know what happens in Jerusalem? What happens is Jesus knows that that's the place and that's when people are going to convict him and they're going to sentence him to a brutal death. And he knows it's coming. And so he knows that his time is limited. He knows that there isn't a whole lot of time left with him left on earth and people to follow him. And so he's saying, come on, we got to go. Come on. We got a mission, and this mission I'm inviting you in on, and I'm inviting you along on this journey. No more excuses. You can't look back. There is no but God first. If you've decided to follow Jesus, it looks like following Jesus every single day, and what it looks like is it it means there's going to be a high cost. But guess what? There's going to be an even higher impact. Think about for a second anything in your life that's been worth anything, anything you've accomplished. Could be any category. Think about right now something you've accomplished throughout your life, any age, doesn't matter what age you are, stage of life. What have you accomplished? Could be you feel really good about your marriage and how you've invested in your marriage. You could uh, build a company, you feel really good about what you've built. Was there a cost to that? Did it cost you anything? I bet it did. Because anything worth anything is going to cost us something. And that's what Jesus tells us is there's going to be a cost to following me. I don't know what your cost is. I don't know what it has been. I don't know what it will be. But Jesus promises us it's as simple as following But it's not easy, because there's going to be a cost. And with high cost comes higher impact with your life. 
There is nothing more important that you and I could give our life to than to following Jesus every day. Not just when it's convenient, not just when it feels good, but to truly laying down our life in surrender to following Jesus every day. Let's jump into Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. So I already read verse 1. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them, sent them how? Two by two, ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He wanted them to be ahead of them and, and prepare the people for him. And I love that he sent them two by two. He did that on purpose. He never wants us to be in this life alone. He never wants us to journey with him alone. He wants us to be with people. He wants us to be alongside people that are gonna support us and encourage us, spur us on when it's hard, give us healthy accountability when we need it. He sent them out two by two so they could be together. The other thing that I wanna remind us in that and I want to remind you today is that the 72 that he sent out, and he sent out many more. They didn't have any specific qualifications. There wasn't any certain class or certification or any training or title or position that any of them had that made them qualified to follow Jesus. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And so today, some of you need to hear, you are qualified. You are qualified. If you have decided to follow Jesus, you have everything you need to live a full life with Jesus. You have everything you need and God is going to equip you along the way. He's going to help you along the way. He's going to bring people into your life. He's going to help you grow in his word through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know you are qualified. How many times have you told God, not me? There's been times I've been, I'm like, that ain't, you're not calling me to that. I'm not doing that. Not me, God. Do you know you know what my past looked like. God, you know, and you're calling me to what? Have you ever been there? Are you there today? Are, have you been saying, uh, but God, first, I got to get my life together. But God, first, I have to figure all this out, and then I'll follow you, and then I'll depend on you, and then I'll surrender my life to you. That's not what Jesus taught. There is no but then. Jesus is like, let's go. I got a mission and a purpose and I've called you and I've qualified you. And you know the only qualifications you and I truly need as believers of Christ, of believers of Jesus, is we need to be qualified to understand the power of God over our own. We need to walk with a conviction that anything that happens as a believer in our life is not because we're something super cool or super great, but because of God's power in our life. And the second thing, the second thing is that we've got a vision to reach all the people. Why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come to this earth? He came to save every last human soul. He came to let every single person across this nation understand that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. There's nothing that we could do. He came to bridge the gap in our sin and give us life of eternity. And so as a follower of Christ, we just gotta know God's power and we gotta have a vision to reach all the people because that's the mission. That's the purpose of Jesus' life. And that's what he calls us to. And so when you and I understand what it looks like to behave, to own that value in our life, we understand that there's going to be a high cost and there's going to be an even higher impact. And we understand that we're qualified. We're qualified because of what we believe. And I love that Jesus sends everyday ordinary people. I love that. I love that. 
And if you and I could sit down across the table from one another and I could, we could share stories and I could share stories of my life and you could share stories of your life, I think there'd be a lot of just like everyday ordinary. We kind of feel just everyday ordinary. And that's who Jesus wanted. That's who Jesus chose as everyday ordinary people to do something real great. And right now, and this is a conservative number, right now in our local community in Cass and Clay County, there are 100,000 people who are living apart from God, who don't want anything to do with God, who don't have a church home. 100,000 people, and God has called this church, Prairie Heights, to close the gap in that 100,000 people because Jesus came so that all could know of his love, that all could be saved, not only for eternity, but then they could live a full life with Jesus at the center of their life while they lived here on earth. And sometimes, you know what I feel? I'll be honest. Sometimes I don't feel equipped for that mission. Sometimes I don't feel qualified for that mission. And you know what God softly whispers? He softly whispers what we got to hear. Heather sing, I am faithful. I am consistent. I am with you. I am near. So when you don't feel qualified, when you don't feel like you've got the answer, you've got it together, Jesus whispers to you, I am faithful. I am consistent. I am with you. I am near you. When we know that we have the power of God and we have a vision to reach all the people, that's all we need. That's all we need. Let's get back into scripture in Luke 10. Verse 2, it says, he told them, Jesus told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. That's a verse and a scripture that me and other leaders here at Prey Heights, we've been praying over for a long time. We've been praying scripturally, God, bring more workers, bring more people that are excited to reach one more. Bring more people that are passionate about the mission that you've called our church to. Because the harvest is plentiful and we see it. And we see that. And uh, specifically, there's a family that over the last year, their names are the Dunhams. And I've gotten to know them personally. And it's been such a joy to get to know their story and their journey and what God's doing in their midst. And they have a heart to reach more people. I want you to go ahead and take a look at their story. So what brought us to Prairie Heights was before we joined, we came from a church background that left us with a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of confusion about church and how it should run and um, who we are in church. And we just didn't want a whole lot to do with church. And whether you've been going to church your entire life or you've never attended a church, the thought of going can be scary, can be intimidating. The thought of exploring your faith or meeting people can be complex. With a lot of fear, walked into the doors of Prairie Heights and God did a miracle in our life through that church in the sense of having a place where we could not be okay we could have stuff we needed to work through. We could come and be imperfect and be a part of a group of people that were striving to be more like Jesus every day. Prairie Heights works so passionately to create a place that isn't scary. It's not intimidating. That connecting with Christ and a church family 
can be simple. Like seen for being a child of God and not as a number in a seat to say, oh, we have so many people. It's you are your own unique person and as a unique individual, we want you here. And even our kids, I think that first Sunday when we were still, do we go to church? Do we take time off? What do we do? I don't really know. Um, we went in and Isaiah was a little reluctant to go to the kids ministry, but after that service, he was absolutely ecstatic about KidVenture. And that entire week he was, when's Sunday? When's Sunday? When are we going to church again? When are we going to church again? And the best part was that week, a kids volunteer that was in his room on Sunday wrote a postcard addressed to him that he received during the week and it just said, we're excited to see you on Sunday. To me, reach one more means we didn't have to fill a certain checklist of religious tasks. We could just be loved for who we are and where we've been and loved in the process of becoming more like Christ. And that kind of intentionality with people, regardless of your backstory, regardless of where you've come from or who you are, there's such an authentic, we want you here and we want you to connect with Christ and a family. And you are family. And that's what we felt like day one after the season we had come out of. Even if you were out drinking last night and feel like you can't go to church, that you can show up and have a hot cup of coffee. Prairie Heights is a place that we absolutely love and we're proud to be Prairie Heighters. We're excited to invite people. We're excited to say where we go to church. And we are confident that when people do come, that they have a great experience, that they're welcomed, that they're greeted, that their kids are gonna reliably have a great time in Kid Venture. And to be able to have friends and a church family where you're just like, check it out. It's going to change your life and be so radically confident in that. No matter who you are, where you've been, Jesus is for you. No matter who you are or where you've been, Jesus is for you. Isn't that right? That's just, that is, that is truth. <laughs> And as I've gotten to know Crystal and Matthew and their kids, um, what I have grown to just love through this process of friendship, uh, through choosing community, is that when you bring others along, you get to see them become fully alive in who God made them to be. When you invite people in to your life, when you invite people in to what we're doing around here at Prairie Heights, and, and we all then get to be a part of all these changed lives, it changes us. <laughs> and so what we need to lean into when we think about how do we become people who reach one more, we bring others along with us. We bring someone with you. You gotta be, if, if you're following Jesus, I wanna, I wanna say this again, like if, if you've decided to follow Jesus, that's, that's the audience I'm talking to. So if you haven't figured that out yet, uh, actually a lot of this like isn't for you because <laughs> like that's why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> and so uh, what I want you to know though, if you've decided to follow Jesus, like you've already decided. Why don't you sit in that for a second? If you've decided to follow Jesus, you've already decided, and the decisions that you've made is you understand that it's a high cost, which means you're gonna have higher impact. It means that you've decided you're qualified. It means that you've decided that you're gonna bring someone with you. Because that's what Jesus invites us to and shows us over and over again. In the last two verses, verses three and four of Luke chapter 10, Jesus says, go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. I want you to maybe take a screenshot of that verse if you don't have it in front of you or you don't have it on your phone in the app. And I want you to think right now, I'm gonna read it again. What word, what phrase, what stands out to you today? What do you need to hear today from God's word in this? Jesus says, go. 
I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse, don't take a bag, don't take your sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. Jesus is saying, it's time to go. We've gotta go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. What does that mean? It ain't gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy for you. Guess what? People are gonna have their opinions about you. And guess what? It's probably not the most popular thing. And if you're looking to win a popularity contest, don't follow Jesus, because you are not gonna win. It's not the goal. When people follow you and you're following Jesus, you know what's beautiful? Is that we have an opportunity then to point them to Jesus. We have an opportunity to point them to Jesus. And what does he say? Don't bring your purse, don't bring your bag, don't bring your sandals, don't bring anything, and don't greet anyone along the way. Stay laser focused because I have a mission and it's urgent and we gotta go after it. We don't have time. It's like Kevin's mom, Kate, who she's yelling, Kevin! And she urgently spends the rest of that time getting back to her son. Because in a sense, she knows where he is, but in a sense, she's lost without being in his presence. There are so many people who are lost because they are not in Jesus' presence. And God has called us to go out, to go and to send and to reach those people. And when we understand that, we understand that to live it out, to behave like that, to have that value, it means that the mission requires a commitment and an urgency. That we are committed to the mission and that we are urgently going after that. When we started this series, we intentionally chose to kick off this series with a baptism service. And baptism at Prairie Heights simply means that you're making a decision to go public with your faith. And we call it getting dunked. And get this, we had 16 people who pre-planned to get baptized that day. Guess what God did? God doubled it. On that day, we gave the opportunity for people, if they felt the power of the Holy Spirit in that moment, that they were meant to get dunked that day, that they could go out, get changed, and they could get dunked. And 16 more people got dunked that day. Yeah. What I love about what we all get to do around here is that we can plan and we can prep. But when it comes to the power of the Holy Spirit and what he decides to do, that's way better. I wanna be a part of that. I wanna be a part of of those moments when when God just so radically gets a hold of someone's life. And I knew at the nine o'clock service I was in the pool and I knew the last person who was planned to get dunked and so I was so excited, like eagerly waiting to see like who's the first person that's gonna come that came to church that day fully dressed in their jeans and shirt and didn't think that they were gonna get changed to get in a pool and get baptized. And all of a sudden this girl, and her name's Ellie, she gets in the pool. And as she gets in the pool, she just, she, she starts by saying, Beth, I've been waiting so long to meet you. <laughs> and I chuckled and then she began telling me her whole story, like her whole story. <laughs> and, um, and I laugh about that now, but I want you to know that there's some really heartbreaking parts to her story. And as she was telling me her story and she was so excited about this moment, this moment that God was radically transforming her life, she shared how there are, there are pieces of her life that she was chasing after something. There were people in her life that she was chasing after that she said to me, clear as day, she looked at me and said, Beth, today I want Jesus to fill all those voids. That's why I'm in this pool today, because I want Jesus to be the center of my life. Whew. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, but wait, it does. <laughs> So she gets dunked, she gets out. And then next, we've got Celia who comes in and she looks at me and she says, this is my first time at Prairie Heights. Welcome, welcome. (laughs) So glad you decided to show up today. (laughs) And without a doubt, I am so glad that she decided to show up that day. 
And what it reminds me of is that today is always someone's first Sunday. Today is someone's first Sunday at Prairie Heights. That day was Celia's first Sunday at Prairie Heights. And the Holy Spirit got a hold of her life in a moment. And she found herself out there getting changed, all of a sudden in line and getting ready to get dunked. So she gets dunked. And then I hear later, after all this happened, then I hear she gets out of the pool, and that's the 9 o'clock service, and she calls her mom. And in between services, she says, hey, mom, I got baptized this morning, which, depending on your religious background, might be a little bit of a shocker. You did what? <laughs> At church today, what? And she invites her mom and her brother to come to the 11 o'clock service. Yeah, you're right. Her brother decides to get in the pool and get dunked at the 11 o'clock service. It's incredible. It doesn't stop there. What I found out later is that Ellie, she goes to school at NDSU and she was watching Prairie Heights one day and she saw Grace who sings on our band. And she's like, hey, I have class with her. And so then the next time she had class, she said, Grace, do you sing at Prairie Heights? And Grace is like, yeah. And she's like, I watched you online. And Grace is like, hey, come with me and come to this group with me. And she started inviting her along. She started bringing her with her. And so Ellie started coming. And then guess who invited Celia? Ellie invited Celia. And that was Celia's very first time at Prairie Heights. Isn't that incredible? And then Celia calls her mom, and her mom and her brother show up, and then her brother gets dunked. Could it be, could it be that God has called you to be the one to reach the one? Could it be that God has called you to be the one to reach the one? That God called Grace to be the one to reach Ellie. That God called Ellie to be the one to reach Celia. That God called Celia to be the one to reach her brother, Elijah. Could it be that God has called you to be the one to reach the one? And so my question to you is, who's your one? Who's your one today? Who's your one that you've been inviting, that you've been praying for, that you've been investing in, that you've been praying about? And right now, right now, I believe that there's some names popping in your head. I just, I just believe that that's the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe there's names that are popping in your head. When I ask you the question, who's your one? There's some names that just started popping in your head. And some of you, some of you, you're thinking, not that one. God, you didn't send me to reach that one. Some of you, it might be an ex-spouse. It might be in a strange relationship with your family. It might be that coworker that you absolutely despise and you don't share any values with. But could it be, could it be that God has called you to be the one to reach the one? And so I'm going to invite us all to a couple next steps. This is for all of us. This is for me too. The first one, number one, our next step is who is your one more? Who is your one more? And I want you to text the first name of that person to 75787. Just the first name. You're not going to get anything back. You will not get any reply back over text. But we just want you to text right now. Grab your phone. Right now, grab your phone. And I want you to text to 75787, what's the first name of that person? I believe he's already given it to you, and if he hasn't, you can text it later. Take a screenshot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put all those first names together, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pray, and then you're gonna move into action. And when God gives you an opportunity, you're gonna lean into it with that person. But as a church family, we're gonna pray over those names. And number two, how are you a part of the mission at Prairie Heights? I want to ask you, how are you a part of the mission at Prairie Heights? And what I want to say is that in this series, Simple Not Easy, we talk about the values and the behaviors. And what I want us all to know is that when we talk about reaching one more, it's real simple. It's just an invitation. It's just a simple invitation. And I'm going to invite you to be a part of the mission that God has called us to, that one simple mission to connect those apart from God with Christ and a church family. And I'm so proud to be part of this church where God is changing, radically changing and transforming lives. I want to give you a couple numbers. 
uh, baptism year to date, we've had 48 people who have made a commitment to go public with their faith through baptism. And every single one of those 48 is a person with a story. Did you know that Grace is one of those 48? She got baptized the time before. And then look at the ripple effect of her faith and her life and how God's transforming her life. Every one of those 48 has a story that God is using. And the next number that we're gonna celebrate real big is that year to date, 363 people have said yes to Christ. Isn't that amazing? Every single one of those 363 have a first name. They have a first name. And they matter to somebody. They were invited by somebody. And they matter even way more to God. And over the last couple months, that number has grown by over 50. And do you want to know how that happened? That happened through Yes to Christ Sundays in Kid Venture and our third, fourth, and fifth graders in a middle school and high school at Oxygen. And I just believe, now more than ever, our kids and our students are craving the deep depth and love of a savior that is consistent, that is faithful, that never leaves, that is always there. And we got many of them who are leaning into that commitment and it's incredible. We get to be a part of it, are you kidding me? It's incredible. And the next number I wanna share is that we've currently got 330 volunteers. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you to 330 volunteers. What you do every single week, the postcards you write, the way that you greet our kids and rock our babies and greet at the, at the parking lot and production and running a camera and all the areas, leading a grow group and being at Oxygen on Wednesday night. Thank you. And look at the, yeah, absolutely. And I want to invite you because look at those numbers, 330 current volunteers and we got 363 people who have said yes to Christ. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. When we connect the dot to those numbers, Jesus, uh, I want to invite you. There's more opportunity. There's more opportunity. The harvest is coming. And I just want to invite you, not, not because... Um, I've said this to a lot of people, and I don't know if you're going to get offended. If you are, it's, a, it's okay, and then we've got to wrap up. Um, uh, we're on mission with or without you. But I want to invite you. Jesus said, I'm on mission with or without you. If you need to go bury somebody, I guess go do it. But I'm on mission with or without you. I'm going. Are you coming? So that's just my invitation to you. Is like, we're going. And God's doing it. God's doing it. God's changing lives. God's transforming lives. Do you want to be a part of it? I do. And I want to invite you to be a part of it. And so I'm going to pray in just a second. And I'm going to invite you to come forward. We typically do what we call playbook. And it's up on the second level. But today, I'm going to dismiss everybody. And then I'm going to invite you to come forward. If you want to learn how you can become part of the mission even more, if you've been someone that's been leaning in and you would say Prairie Heights is your church home, but you haven't gotten connected in any way and you've kind of just been coming and going and you want to be more of a part to, so that you can choose community, meet other people, and be on the journey together, I want to invite you to do that today. So let me say a prayer. God, thank you for who you are. You are so faithful. You are near to us and you have called us to a mission God, and we say yes. You said go, and we say we'll follow. And it's so clear, and it's so simple, and darn it, it's not easy. <laughs> but Jesus, you invite us to that, and, and I just know that, God, there are eager, tender hearts here that, God, you have called us to be part of that together. And so would you bless these people? Would you give them, you've already given them everything you need, so would you just give them the courage to go and to live it out? who you made them to be and keep praying about the one more in their life and remind them that you've called them to be the one to reach the one. Jesus, we love you and we pray all this in your name. Amen.